Magandang uh, hapon sa ating lahat. Miss Balbin was my student okay, a few years ago. Um, I was asked to uh, discuss with you contracts. Okay? So uh, I presume you have already discussed uh, or someone discussed uh, uh, obligations. Now, um, Oblicon is one of uh, the favorite uh, subjects of civil law, okay? For the past 30 years, on the average, there would be 15% of the questions uh, would fall under Oblicon. But uh, for the past five years, hindi masyado, okay? Uh, in fact, uh, Example, last year, only about 7%. 2005, 6%. 2006, 0 And that is Oblicon. As far as contracts are concerned, for the past five years, not been a favorite. For three consecutive years, 2006, 7, and 8, 0. Wala sa contracts. Unbelievably. Okay? Uh, if I can classify a one-point problem under contracts, it is because basically uh, the question pertains to the statute of frauds, whether uh, a guarantee, an oral guarantee is valid and binding. But that requires also knowledge of the fact that a guarantee is a special promise to answer for the debt of another. So that question might fall under special contracts also. Uh, uh, I said unbelievably because if you will uh, survey um, the cases decided by the Supreme Court in each year, okay, I'd, uh, I'd say hands down, most of the questions, uh, most of the cases decided would fall under Oblicon and special contracts. Isama nyo na yung torts and damages. Not even half of those questions would fall under persons, property, succession, okay? But uh, that's a reality, it's a bar exam, okay? When you become lawyers, I dare to say, on your first five years, you may not even handle cases on succession. Maybe on the first two years, not even a case on persons or property. But immediately, within the, a day or two, you will be handling cases on contracts, okay? Or even torts and damages. Maybe because of this uh, reality that uh, uh, Dean Riano uh, allotted uh, 12 hours for contracts alone. So we will have... Uh, sufficient time to cover contracts baka June na ang mga tanong sa contracts this year okay baka marami na this is uh, also really possible because even uh, special contracts is not really a favorite sa bar exam okay uh, in a way once every five six years would uh, special contracts be a favorite but last year there were uh, 18% of the questions falling under special contracts. So, uh, again, uh, having we will have uh, 12 hours of contracts. I believe we can cover uh, the most important principles okay, under this uh, field of law. So, I'll start with... Uh, ah. Uh, how do I discuss uh, topics, okay? From time to time, I will be uh, presenting to you actual bar examination questions, okay? I think that's the most scientific way of, uh, of um, uh, discussing the topic together with actual bar examination questions and actual cases instead of me giving hypothetical questions na Sarili ko lang gawa, sarili ko lang guni guni, okay? Now, uh, but uh, I have uh, a few reasons for uh, 
uh, this uh, method, okay, uh, why I would present actual bar examination questions, the first, of course, would be to uh, sometimes to introduce a topic. Uh, questions like uh, distinguish one from another, one topic, uh, one concept from another, or uh, define, etc., definitely would uh, introduce you to the topic. But uh, probably the most important reason, okay, why I would be presenting actual bar examination questions is because of uh, this conviction, okay, uh, which I believe I'm not alone, okay. I talked to uh, one of the examiners uh, last year, 2009 bar exam, a few days ago, and he is also of the belief uh, that uh, one of the main problems of the examinees, last year at least, is the identification of issues, okay. Given a certain problem, what really is the, I what are really the issues in the problem, okay? Um, because uh, to him, and I, I would agree with him on this, you already know the laws, okay? Graduate na kayo eh, so alam nyo na yung mga principles. But in a given scenario, you will not be told na, eh, ang problem na ito ay persons. Hindi ka naman sasabihin, oy, ang problem na ito, torts and damages, di ba? So based on the facts, based on the question asked, uh, what are the issues really? Uh, to be able to identify the issues uh, uh, means that you have already solved the problem. Sabi nga nila, 50% of the problem, okay? And then if you know the issues, then you would be able to apply the principles related to these issues, okay? So, uh, in a way, the third uh, reason why I would uh, present bar examination questions would uh, uh, be uh, to show to you the application of the principles to actual scenarios. Now, of course, uh, one other purpose is uh, for you to be uh, familiar with these uh, questions, okay? May na ngayon, it's barely four months to uh, the bar exams, okay? So by now, you should already be very much familiar with actual bar examination questions. But hopefully, uh, another purpose is uh, that I would be able to help you answer bar examination questions, okay? May mga ilang problems in answering bar exam questions, so I hope I can help in this area. But ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, probably the most equally important as a purpose is that uh, uh, knowing the bar exam questions for the past 30 years would tell you that these questions are not really that difficult to answer. Diba? Kayang kaya nyo lahat yan. Okay? So, um, again, um, contracts. Uh, a survey of uh, these questions falling under contracts would tell you that basically uh, the problems would fall under two major topics, okay? Uh, fundamental principles or also known as fundamental characteristics and defective contracts, okay? So uh, I would also focus on these uh, um, topics fundamental principles or fundamental characteristics and defective contracts. Now, uh, into this uh, concept, okay? First, um, are agreements contracts, okay? Well, uh, you must have uh, uh, read already that uh, Contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts, okay? Uh, how come not all agreements are contracts when agreements would involve the meeting of the minds, diba? Example, if uh, A and B would agree that uh, Manny Pacquiao is still the best boxer in the world despite a new uh, 
a new uh, classification. Ang best boxer na daw dito pound for pound is uh, sino na nga ito? The Black American. Uh, Mayweather. Okay? But if A and B had an agreement, uh, they agreed. Is that an agreement? Yes. But is that a contract? The answer is no. Okay? Why not? Because a mere agreement will not necessarily constitute a contract. The answer here goes into the nature of a contract. What is really a contract? A contract is one of the sources of obligations. In other words, with an agreement, with a meeting of the minds between two persons as defined under, 11, under 1305, one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service, okay? Thus, with an agreement, for that agreement to constitute, uh, to be considered as a contract, there must be an obligation arising from that agreement, okay? Now, uh, in the same manner, I dare to say, the son in pago is not a contract, okay? Uh, the son in pago, is the delivery of a thing by a debtor to his creditor in satisfaction of his debt. This is not a mere agreement to deliver. It is the delivery, okay? Without delivery, there is no dasyon in pago. So dasyon in pago is not a contract. It is not a source of obligation. To the contrary, dasyon in pago is a mode of extinguishing obligations. Opposite ang kanilang nature. A contract creates obligations. Thus, an impago extinguishes an obligation. Okay, but you should you should not confuse a contract for an obligation. An obligation is not a contract. A contract is not an obligation. Rather, a contract is one of the sources of obligations. Okay. Uh, in a way, some would be confused. Uh, there are modes of extinguishing obligations, diba? But the law would also provide for modes of extinguishing contracts. As we discussed the special contracts, example, uh, contracts of sale, there, uh, a group of modes of extinguishment will be those modes of, extinguishing, modes of extinguishment of obligations in general. So, if a mode of extinguishment would be a mode of extinguishing obligations, that would also be a mode of extinguishing contracts? Yes. Because if it extinguishes the contract, then the obligations arising from the contract would likewise be extinguished. Okay? Except, of course, those which have already been vested. Okay? Now, um, so, uh, uh, having discussed the nature but I mentioned that this, this is just one of the sources of obligations, okay, under 1157. There are other sources, four other sources. In other words, given a certain scenario, for example, uh, the case of uh, Saludaga versus FEU, 2008 case, okay, where a student of uh, FEU, a sophomore law student was shot by a security guard, okay? And, uh, of course, he survived. He sued FEU. Uh, what possible liabilities may arise? Is it possible for uh, a liability to arise under quasi-delict? Of course. Uh, who may be held liable? The employer of uh, the security guard. But can FEU be held liable? under quasi-delic? The answer is no, said the Supreme Court, because FEU was not the employer of the security guard. But even if FEU cannot be held liable under that source of obligation, quasi-delic, it doesn't mean that FEU cannot be held liable at all. In fact, in this case, FEU was held liable under a contract. Because when a student enrolls in a school or university, okay? A contract is entered into, and in that contract, one of the obligations of the school is to maintain a peaceful environment conducive to learning, okay? This 
contract was violated by FEU when it relegated the evaluation of uh, the qualifications of security guards to the security agency. Walang ginawa ang school in relation to the qualifications of uh, the security guards. Okay? So, uh, again, given a certain scenario, it is possible that uh, a liability may arise not necessarily from one source but from the other sources okay? in one given scenario. Okay? Now, um, is, this, is the right to enter into a contract a purely statutory right? Okay? If you remember, I uh, noticed you have already, or uh, uh, Dean Navarro discussed with you uh, succession already. And uh, authors like uh, Justice Simpudi would take the position that uh, the right to enter in, the right to execute a will or to make a will is a purely statutory right. Is the right to enter into a contract similar, the same, in the sense that uh, it is a purely statutory right? I don't think so. This right is protected under the Constitution. Okay? There is a clause in the Constitution known as the non-impairment clause. Okay? Not even the state can uh, uh, violate the rights of uh, the parties to a contract. Okay? With exception, of course, uh, uh, if it is in the exercise of police power. Okay? Now, uh, then, uh, one last, marriage. Is marriage a contract? As a contract is defined under 1305, obviously it is not, okay? In fact, the family code would consider it as a special contract, okay? Why so special? Well, there are differences, okay, between this special this contract and contracts under the civil code example who may be the parties to this contract under the family code as to marriage the parties can only be a male and a female well in contracts it doesn't matter male with male female with female it doesn't matter now the governing law what primarily would govern the rights and obligations of the parties to a contract the answer is the stipulations, okay? The terms and conditions agreed upon by the parties that would primarily govern. Of course, subject to the limitation that they are not contrary to law, morals, etc. But as far as marriage is concerned, of course, primarily the rights and obligations of uh, the spouses shall be governed by law, not by their stipulation, okay? Except yung property relations nila. To the contrary, opposite, okay? Finally, of course, termination. Nako, there are so many modes of termination or extinguishment of contracts, okay? Uh, but uh, marriage uh, ordinarily would be extinguished only by the death of one of the parties, till death do us part, diba? Except, of course, if there is annulment, declaration, even declaration of nullity is not uh, extinguishment or termination because in the first place, the marriage did not exist. It's just a mere, mere declaration of the nullity of the marriage. Okay? Now, uh, into this uh, definition. Okay? Um, in every concept okay uh, I would uh, I always would recommend that uh, a student or a review we examine it should try to memorize at least the definition of the concept okay I have not ever demanded from a student that uh, he memorize all the provisions the civil code of the Philippines okay but at least the definition okay from the definition you would you may be able to answer some questions because these definitions would actually capsulize the essence of the concept diba pinaghirapan nila ang mga definition na ito but there are also defects allegedly okay some of these definitions are defective example 
As to contracts, the law defines a contract uh, is a meeting of the minds between two persons. Okay? In other words, there should be two persons in order for a contract to be perfected. But the question here is, may a contract May a person contract with himself. Okay? In other words, may there be rights and obligations arising from a contract even if only one person participated in the execution of the contract. The answer is yes. This contract is known as an auto contract. Okay? A person okay, may contract with himself. In one capacity, representing another person, and in another capacity for himself, acting for himself, or even acting for another person. Okay? A good uh, example of an auto contract is when a person is authorized to borrow money. Okay? Uh, if he is authorized to borrow money, can he himself be the lender? Under the law, yes. The only limitation provided by law is that the interest must be the market rate. In other words, in that loan agreement, he will be signing as representative of the principal of the borrower, but he will also be signing as the, uh, for himself as the lender. Okay? This is an auto contract and this is a valid contract. This may be a valid contract. Of course, uh, there are auto contracts which are prohibited under Philippine law, okay, by way of exception, okay. Uh, one such contract uh, will be discussed in detail uh, under the law on sales. Under 1491, a guardian is prohibited from acquiring by purchase the property of his ward. In other words, in a deed of sale, the guardian cannot be the seller at the same time he is the buyer okay now thus it is said that uh, despite the use of the word persons in the definition between two persons the code commission really contemplated parties okay so between two parties now uh, if you will again consider this definition closely it is thereafter provided that whereby one binds himself with respect to the other. Does it mean, therefore, that only one of the parties would be obligated in a contract? Only one of them would bind himself to the other. In other words, all contracts are unilateral contracts? Of course not. Okay? Of course, this is considered as a defect in this definition because... I would even say ordinarily, reciprocal obligations would arise from a contract. Okay? In other words, contracts ordinarily would be bilateral in character. Both parties would be obligated. Okay? Of course, there are contracts which are unilateral. Okay? We will discuss these kinds of contracts as we discuss the classification of contracts. But finally, may... An obligation not to do arise from a contract. If you will read the definition again, it says the last phrase, to give something or to do some service. So apparently only obligations to give and to do may arise from a contract. But then again, it's not really accurate. Okay? Because even obligations not to do may arise from a contract. Uh, all of us must uh, have observed that already that there is not a single taxi cab na Honda. Diba? Have you noticed a uh, taxi cab na Honda ang tatak? It is because in each and every contract of sale entered into by Honda okay, or the dealers of Honda, there would be a stipulation that the buyer cannot use the car as a taxi cab. So that is an obligation not to do. Okay? Uh, on the other hand, we must have noticed some stores. Okay? Uh, 
uh, itong store natin, hindi. In some stores, mga sari-sari store, they would only sell certain products, di ba? Yung iba, lahat Coca-Cola products. Yung iba, Pepsi-Cola products. It is because in these contracts, again, there would be a stipulation that they cannot sell the products of other brands, di ba? Kaya even from these contracts, obligations not to do may arise from a contract. Now, um, so I can proceed to the fundamental characteristics, okay? Precisely because they are fundamental, kaya maraming tanong dito. Um, authors would classify this, uh, 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 would enumerate uh, the fundamental characteristics into five, okay? First, uh, autonomy of contracts, then consensuality of contracts, then ob mutuality, obligatory force, others would call obligatoriness, and finally, relativity of contracts, okay? Now, uh, what is this uh, autonomy of contracts, okay? Under 1306, uh, okay? The contracting parties okay, may establish such stipulations, clauses, terms, and conditions as they may deem convenient. Okay? Kaya siya autonomy because they can validly stipulate okay, as they may deem convenient. Others would call this as liberty of contract or freedom of contract. Okay? Kaya lang... Example, um, in a contract of partnership entered into by A, B, and C, okay? And in that uh, contract, it was stipulated that out uh, of the profits of the partnership, 50% uh, will go to A, the other 50% will be given to B. Thus, if uh, 100,000 profit was uh, uh, earned by the business of the partnership, who will uh, share this profit? Would A and B share 50,000 each? The answer is definitely no. Okay? Because this stipulation as to the sharing of profits is void under the law. In other words, while the parties can stipulate, can establish such stipulations, clauses, terms, and conditions as they may deem convenient, the requirement of the law is that these stipulations should not be contrary to law, morals, uh, good customs, public order, or public policy. Okay? The bar exam questions would actually pertain to these limitations, basically. As to... Laws, okay, whether a stipulation is contrary to law or not, wala tayong magagawa. We just have to know the law, okay? The laws, uh, which uh, declares certain stipulations to be void. Example, a forfeiture clause. May a forfeiture clause in a contract be void? Is there a law which uh, provides for the nullity of a forfeiture clause? There is, okay? And that would be applicable if you are confronted with the Maceda law. If the problems would pertain to or covered by the Maceda law, that law declares such clause to be a void clause. But in other instances, mukhang valid siya, di ba? For feature clause. Waivers, of course, ordinarily a waiver may be a valid waiver, di ba? If all the requisites are present but are there laws which would co which consider some waivers void of course there are many laws okay example in sales uh, if there is a waiver as uh, against the seller in case of eviction that would be a void waiver if the seller was in bad faith yeah um Ano pang mga 
Waiver. Waiver as to future fraud. You must have discussed already in obligations. Yes, avoid waiver. Okay. Now, um, waivers, other stipulations like uh, ang mga pactum. Basta lahat ng pactum mukhang void. Okay. Pactum commissorium, pactum leonina, pactum non aliendo. They are void stipulations. Of course, Pactum Leonina, this is the stipulation I mentioned a while ago. A stipulation in a contract of partnership which excludes at least one of the parties from sharing in the profits is a void stipulation. That's Pactum Leonina. Uh, Pactum Commissorium is a stipulation in a contract of pledge or mortgage. Uh, which provides that upon default of the principal debtor, the property pledge or mortgage will automatically be owned by the pledgee or mortgagee. Okay? And the pactum nol aliendo in real estate mortgage is a, a stipulation prohibiting the mortgagor from alienating his property without the consent of the mortgagee. That is a void stipulation. Okay? Now, uh, but there are other uh, stipulations uh, which uh, may or may not valid depending on the circumstances. Example, um, this one. July 1, 1998, Brian leased an office space in a building for a period of five years at a rental rate of 1000 a month. The contract of lease contained the proviso that in case of inflation or devaluation of the Philippine peso, the monthly rental will automatically be increased or decreased depending on the devaluation or inflation of the peso to the dollar. Okay? Starting March 1, 2001, the lessor increased the rental to 2000 a month on the ground of inflation proven by the fact that the exchange rate of the Philippine peso to the dollar had increased from... 25 pesos to a dollar to 50 pesos to a dollar. Brian refused to pay the increased rate and an action for unlawful detainer was filed against him. Will the action prosper? Why? Again, uh, in answering questions, if you are confronted with a problem involving a contract of lease, for example, as in this case, does it mean that the answer to the question would be a provision under the law on lease? Not necessarily. Okay? In other words, lease contract ang nakalagay, pero actually ang sagot nasa oblikon. Di ba? Uh, thus, you just have to know the issue really in the problem. Uh, hindi mo kailangan malaman ang mga provisions sa lease kasi wala doon ang sagot. Okay? But, will the action prosper? Um... If you read the suggested answer of the UPILO Center okay, to this question, the answer was no, the action cannot prosper because there was no extraordinary inflation. Okay? Uh, in fact, another alternative answer, which would also give you a no as an answer, is because uh, in order for 1250, apparently the applicable provision is 1250, to be applicable, there has to be an extraordinary inflation or deflation which is declared by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. There being no declaration of such extraordinary inflation, there can be no adjustment as to the compensation. With all due respect to those answers, I think those answers are wrong. Okay? Uh, I believe at the alternative answer, the last alternative answer is the best answer. Okay? Because nothing in the problem would tell you that the parties required extraordinary inflation. Tingnan nyo ang facts, nakalagay lang was inflation or devaluation. Hindi naman nila require na extraordinary. So, we just go by the stipulation of the parties. It is the stipulations, clauses, and conditions agreed upon by the parties which will bind the parties okay now uh, and why i am so so sure of my possession because this is similar to a case decided by the supreme court this is similar to the case of del rosario versus shell 
where in fact the Supreme Court recognized the validity of the stipulation in relation to the rentals, okay, uh, where the shell, where shell was the lessee. Ganun din, sem similar ang stipulation. If there would be a devaluation, then there would be an increase in the rental. Is that a reasonable uh, reason for the increase in the rental? Of course. Kasi kung nag-devalue ng, pe ng ang peso, ikaw ang lessor, eh, wala nang silbi ang rental sa'yo. Di ba? In this case, 100% ang devaluation, then the rental should likewise be increased 100%. That is only a reasonable stipulation. Now, uh, the problem clearly pertains to a clause known as an escalation clause. Take note, do not confuse this clause from an acceleration clause. Okay, This is an escalation clause in this clause, okay, upon the happening of a certain contingency, the compensation of one of the parties may be increased. Okay? So this would normally happen in loans. In loans, uh, uh, depending on the happening of a certain contingency, like uh, if the market rate uh, uh, of, the, of interest would increase, then the bank may increase the interest, the rate of interest. Okay? Uh, however, here in lease contracts, it will be the rental which will increase. If you will be a council of uh, realty firms, you would notice you magat, if you are on the side of the contractor, you should always ensure that there is such an escalation clause in favor of your uh, client, of your client, of the contractor. Okay, so for example. Uh, a common escalation clause would be that for every one peso increase in the minimum wage of a worker in Metro Manila, there would be a corresponding 10 million increase in the compensation of the contractor. That is a reasonable uh, stipulation because pag nag-increase ng piso ang minimum wage and you have 2,000 workers, ay talo ka, ubus ang uh, kita mo, baga lugi ka pa if you are the contractor if there will be no uh, escalation as far as the compensation of the contractor, okay? But may an escalation clause be considered void or ineffective or may an escalation clause not be given effect? The answer is yes. If this is escalation clause is an escalation clause in a contract of loan, which would give... Uh, the bank, for example, the right to increase the interest, okay? Because one of the reasons why this clause would be void is because there is no de-escalation clause. It is because there is a monetary board resolution as far as loans are concerned that for an escalation clause to be valid, there should be a de-escalation clause, okay? The evil here which is to be uh, prevented is uh, the practice before that uh, if the interest uh, market rate would increase, the bank would increase the rate. But if the market rate would uh, decrease, the bank will not decrease the interest rate. Diba? Now, um, so there is that uh, requirement. Okay? Uh, of course, a limitation also as far as this uh, uh, clause is concerned is the bank cannot increase the rate more than once in a year, okay? Once a year lang. Unlike in one case, aba, four times a year in invoke niya ang escalation clause. That is not possible again considering the monetary board resolution on the matter, okay? Um, I think, no. So, escalation clause, okay? Now, uh, in this case, okay, uh, you must have heard of a non-involvement clause in a contract of employment or employment contracts. Okay? In a case uh, decided in 2007, DC 2 versus Platinum Plans, ito ang stipulation, okay? non-involvement provision that the employee further undertakes that during his or her engagement with the employer and in case of separation from the company 
whether voluntary or for cause, he, she shall not for the next two years thereafter engage in or be involved with any corporation, association, or entity, whether directly or indirectly, engage in the same business or belonging to the same pre need industry as the employer. Any breach of the foregoing provision shall render the employee liable to the employer in the amount of 100,000 pesos for and as liquidated damages. Okay? Now, um, is this a valid provision? Is this a valid clause, non-involvement clause? Okay? Um, in one case, the Supreme Court ruled that this is not a valid clause because that would uh, limit okay, the right of uh, uh, a person okay, as far as his livelihood is concerned. Okay? Uh, this would be an unreasonable restraint of trade in that case. Okay? However, uh, in this particular case, was the provision considered as a void provision, as uh, an unreasonable restraint of trade? The Supreme Court said no, okay, in this particular case. Uh, Daisy Chu obviously uh, resigned from Platinum Plans and joined another printed company, uh, Professional Plan Shata of the Philippines, okay? Now, uh, the reason given by the Supreme Court why this stipulation, this clause is not a void clause because this is not an absolute prohibition, okay? There are limitations to the prohibition in relation to the period, in relation to the trade, in relation to the area, okay? Mukha namang hindi naman until she dies, okay? Ang nakalagay lang naman ay two years, okay? At hindi naman, he cannot, she cannot join any corporation. She just cannot join another corporation engaged in the same business, printed business, okay? Plus, of course, apparently this limitation pertains only to the Philippines, okay? Now, uh, this the Supreme Court ruled is a reasonable protection to the rights of the employer, especially because this uh, plain, this uh, defendant, ito, Daisy Chu, who is the petitioner in this case, um, was actually the assistant vice president of Platinum Plans in charge for the ASEAN region. Her, posi her, her position, the company, is so uh, so important okay that she would know the 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 strategies of the company okay so to protect uh, uh, the employer this uh, provision was considered as a reasonable limitation okay on the rights of uh, the employee so non involvement clause okay ah i mentioned uh, kanina pala yung escalation clause uh, the um, important requirement for an escalation clause is that it should not be solely potestative in character. In other words, uh, the clause, uh, uh, whether or not uh, the clause would be applicable, should not depend on the whim of only one of the parties. The Supreme Court would say it should be based on a reasonable and valid standards, okay? Basta ganon, pwede na. It may be a valid escalation clause. Now, contrary to law, okay? Uh, how about contrary to morals, okay? Well, uh, of course, the Supreme Court would, uh, would tell us that uh, whether a stipulation is contrary to morals or not, is the most difficult task to do, okay? The most difficult to ascertain is whether a stipulation is contrary to morals, okay? Because obviously what is moral to one may not be moral to the others, okay? Uh, if I ask you, uh, the use of contraceptives, would that be moral? or immoral, mga ganyan. So, would the sale of uh, 
contraceptives be immoral or not, okay? Of course, others would claim that is immoral, okay? Although almost everyone is using contraceptives, okay? But uh, ordinarily, what stipulation would be considered immoral by the Supreme Court? Ang pinakamadaming kaso would pertain to interest, okay? Uh, interest stipulation. Example, or penalties. For example, uh, if the penalty is five, pers five pesos a day for every day of delay, would that be uh, contrary to morals? Would that be excessive, iniquitous, uh, unconscionable, five pesos per day? Of course, ang sagot, it depends on the principal amount. Kasi kung ang principal amount, 10 million pesos, what is 5 pesos a day? Pero in one case where the principal amount was only 465 pesos and the penalty is 5 pesos per day, aba sabi ng Supreme Court, this stipulation is immoral. Okay? Contrary to morals, unconscionable, excessive because 5 pesos per day 465 almost 400% per annum na ang penalty yeah? now uh, into uh, interest stipulations if you have read cases like Solongon versus Solongon yung mga 5.5% interest per month or 6% per month would obviously be considered contrary to morals, excessive, iniquitous, unconscionable, di ba? Um, pero, that would be because 6 times 12, that's 72% per annum, di ba? But, would 3% per month also be unconscionable, immoral, or contrary to morals? The Supreme Court ruled in a recent case, the case of Makalinaw versus BPI, decided by the Supreme Court only last year, ordinarily not covered by the exam. Hanggang June lang dapat, ano? Pero minsan nagtatanong ang mga examiner ng kaso not covered, okay? And in this case, decided on September 17, last year, 2009, uh, a stipulation in... Uh, uh, an agreement involving a credit card, obviously involving BPI, which provides for an interest na 3% per month plus penalty in case there is failure to pay uh, uh, on the date uh, agreed upon. Okay, 3% uh, per month then ang penalty. Effectively, that would be 36% per annum only. But the Supreme Court in this case ruled that, that this interest stipulation and the penal clause, they are both void. Okay? They are unconscionable, they are inequitous, they are contrary to morals, if not against the law. Okay? Three percent lang. Esamanta lang yung iba, ten percent per month. Diba? There are cases na ten percent per month. Ito three percent. Of course, the Bankers Association of the Philippines would claim that this ruling is applicable only to this case because really this will have uh, a grave effect as far as banks are concerned. What is the effect? Pag void ang interest stipulation. Does it mean that the lender can no longer recover interest? Hindi naman. Okay? The Supreme Court in this case, consistent with the uh, other decisions, only reduced the interest to 1% per month. Pati na rin ang penalty. Nireduce na rin sa 1% per month. Effectively, that's 12% per annum, which is the legal rate as far as loans are concerned. So the lender can still recover interest, pero legal rate na lang, 12% per annum. Kaya kung may mga hindi kayo nabayaran sa banko na mga dahil sa credit cards, you might want to invoke this uh, ruling in Makalinaw versus BPI, which uh, the Bankers Association of the Philippines is claiming 
to be applicable only to that case. Of course, if you read the case, there appears to be no basis to that claim. Basta any agreement involving credit cards, this may be involved. Okay? Now, contrary to morals, of course, uh, a stipulation or a provision in a contract may be contrary to public policy and therefore, again, void. The first question here is, uh, how would you know if there is a public policy involved in relation to a certain topic, a certain subject matter, okay? And where will you find this public policy? Saan nyo ito makikita? Okay? Ordinarily, if a law is passed, there would normally be a public policy behind the law that will be cited by the lawmakers, di ba? Although sometimes wala, di ba? They will not at all even mention a public policy. But where will you uh, find public policies in this country? Siyempre nandun sa fundamental law of the land, nasa constitution, okay? Uh, while I have not, I have not uh, asked anyone to memorize the civil code of the Philippines, I have asked my students, reviewers, examinees to try to memorize the constitution. Okay? You will not only uh, be benefited by that sa political law, pati sa labor law, pati sa civil law, pati remedial law, criminal law, magagamit niyo ang constitution. Okay? In fact, last year, ang mga tanong sa labor law, enumerate constitutional provisions protecting labor. Di ba? Mga ganun. So, ganun ka objective. Ganun din sa civil law. As we discuss certain topics sa um, contracts or sa sales, the answer may be under sa constitution. Okay? Concretely, itong bar exam question na ito. Alma was hired as a domestic helper in Hong Kong by the Dragon Services Limited through its local agent. She executed a standard employment contract designed by the Philippine Overseas Workers Administration for Overseas Filipino Workers. It provided for employment for one year at a salary of 1,000 US dollars a month. It was submitted to and approved by the POA. However, when she arrived in Hong Kong, she was asked to sign another contract by Dragon Services Limited, which reduced her salary to only $600 US dollars a month. Having no other choice, Alma signed the contract, but she returned to the Philipp but when she returned to the Philippines, she demanded payment of the salary differential of four hundred US dollars a month. Both Dragon Services Limited and its local agent claimed that the second contract is valid under the laws of Hong Kong and therefore binding on Alma. Is their claim correct? Explain, okay? Of course, uh, even if the examiner would uh, not ask you to explain, always explain, okay? Hindi pwede ang yes or no lang, okay? Ang mas importante ay ang explanation. Now, is their claim correct, okay? Uh, I would agree that uh, the claim is not correct because even if that contract, even if the stipulation in that contract where the salary would only be 600 US dollars a month is a valid stipulation and that contract is a valid contract under the law of Hong Kong, it cannot be enforced in this jurisdiction because that contract is specifically that stipulation is contrary to our public policy. And the public policy is in the Constitution which provides full protection to labor, okay? So if only for that, uh, that, that uh, claim of uh, Dragon Services is not correct, okay? Now, uh, public policy. In uh, certain cases, the Supreme Court would uh, declare null and void a stipulation. For example, in the case of uh, Arellano, Cui versus Arellano, School of Law, okay, where uh, Kui was a student, okay, and uh, uh, he enjoyed a scholarship as a student of Arellano. However, it was stipulated in that scholarship uh, program that 
if he would transfer to another law school, he will have to reimburse Arellano uh, for the amounts which he should have paid had he not been a scholar. Okay? Uh, the law dean of uh, Arellano at that time was the uncle of Kui. And when the law dean transferred to another law school, Kui also transferred together with his uncle. Okay? There was no problem at that time until he was about to take the bar exam because then he would need the grades from Arellano. But Arellano refused to release the grades until he would reimburse Arellano as so provided in the scholarship uh, agreement. Okay? E walang magawa ang kuwi, he paid under protest for him to be able to take the bar exam. Obviously, he passed the bar exam and sued Arellano. Okay? And sabi ng Supreme Court, that stipulation is void. Okay? Why is it void? Because it is contrary to public policy. What is the public policy involved in this case? Scholarship grants are granted on the basis of merit. Okay? And it should not be granted in order to bolster the reputation of law schools, of any school, so that if a student would want to transfer to another law school, he should not be required to reimburse, okay? Whatever amount he should have paid had he not been a scholar, okay? Kaya today, if you have noticed sa mga eskwelahan, ibang scholarship, ibang grants, okay? Merong scholarship based on merit kasi valedictorian ka, kasi salutatorian ka, uh, or nasa OPF ka, kumbaga, Order of the Purple Feather. But uh, iba ang grants because there could be conditions in these grants, okay? That you have to teach, you have to work in the Philippines, etc. Okay? Now, uh, in another case, okay, which is relevant uh, these days, involving uh, an agreement of uh, two persons uh, vying for the official nomination as a candidate of a party. I think it's Nationalist Party. As the official candidate uh, uh, for a congressional seat in Pangasinan, mga fifth district yata sa Pangasinan, okay? It was stipulated in their agreement that uh, they would have to go through the process ng convention. And whoever would lose in that convention shall not run as an independent nor a rebel candidate, okay? Obviously, itong uh, sindiko, the defendant, uh, uh, lost in the convention, in the party convention, but she still ran, okay? At mukhang nanalo siya. So, Saura sued Sindico for damages. Did the action prosper? The Supreme Court again said, the action cannot prosper because that stipulation which prohibited Sindico from running as an independent is a void stipulation because it is contrary to public policy again. What is the public policy uh, involved In this case, the Supreme Court discussed two public policies that uh, a mere agreement of two persons cannot limit the right of a person to present himself as a candidate okay, in an electoral contest. But the other public policy discussed was an agreement between two persons cannot limit the right of the electorate to choose who among the candidates is fit for that particular position. This case was decided uh, decades ago, okay? And I dare to say that uh, the first discussed public policy is no longer a public policy today, okay? Under our present constitution. Uh, it is no longer considered a right for a person to present himself as a candidate. Rather, this is merely considered now as a privilege. But the other uh, public policy discussed is definitely a good public policy, that a mere agreement of two or more persons cannot limit the 
uh, right of the electorate to choose who among the candidates is fit for that position. Take note that even public policy can change. Okay? Hindi lang morals ang nagbabago, hindi lang batas ang nagbabago. Maski public policy may change, although not as fast as certain laws. Okay? Especially siguro sa labor law. Okay? Sa civil law, hindi masyado. Stable, medyo stable ang civil law. So, um, public uh, policy. Now, uh, into another, okay? Another uh, fundamental principle known as consensuality of contracts, okay? Under this principle, for a contract to be valid, the parties must voluntarily give their consent, okay? Now, uh, in other words, no one can be compelled to enter into a contract, okay? If he was compelled, uh, if you read this case, there is one other way of answering this question. That other contract signed in Hong Kong may at least be considered as avoidable contract under Philippine law because of the statement having no other choice. It appears that there was vitiation of consent, diba? So you can attack the problem in that perspective, okay? Kung gusto mo, dalawa ang sagot mo, di ba? Sigurista. Para talagang uh, uh, kumbinsido ang examiner, okay? But uh, under the consensuality of contracts, again, no one can be compelled, not even the government, not even City Hall, can compel anyone to enter into a contract. Uh, unbelievably, in the case of Republic versus PLDT, the government uh, filed an action to compel PLDT to enter into an interconnection agreement. At that time, when the action was filed, yung telecommunication services within the country was controlled by PLDT. And uh, as far as uh, the telecommunication industry uh, with other countries controlled in by PLDT except to the U.S. Sa U.S. may mga kakompetensya siya. Okay? And the government would want to have uh, uh, use of this uh, uh, interconnection services ng PLDT. Kaya lang mukhang ayaw ng PLDT ng terms and conditions. It doesn't want to enter into that contract. So the government pre uh, filed this action. Obviously, the Supreme Court said PLDT cannot be compelled to enter into a contract. Okay? Uh, consent must be voluntarily given in order for a contract to be a valid contract. There should be a meeting of the minds. Consent must be freely given. Okay? Although if you have read this case, may lusot ang Supreme Court. Okay? This action was treated as an expropriation proceeding okay uh, so walang lusot ang PLDT okay although this appears to be improper kasi my procedure dapat to be followed in expropriation of properties now uh, in relation to uh, this fundamental characteristic okay consensuality of contracts this there is a contract which is claimed to be void, allegedly for lack of consent of one of the parties because the contract was prepared by only one of the parties. Okay? The terms of conditions have already been prepared by a party considered as the stronger party, and such contract is uh, presented to the other party for his adhesion. Okay? for him to sign the contract. In other words, uh, there was practically no negotiation as to the terms and conditions. He has no, uh, there was no uh, uh, consent as to that terms and conditions. And this contract is obviously known as a contract of adhesion. Lahat tayo pumasok na sa kontratang ito. I'm sure sumakay na kayo ng Aeroplano, okay? Or maski bus. 
o kaya you sent uh, items or letters through uh, JRS or uh, LBC, ang mga contracts na ito ay contracts of adhesion. Okay? Kung ayaw mo ng terms and conditions nila, sa iba ka na lang pumunta. Di ba? Kung ayaw mo ng terms and conditions ng Philippine Airlines, sumakay ka sa dati ang pangalan ay Asian Spirit. Di ba? Uh, yung tipong you, ano daw, you fly as an Asian, you land as a spirit. Di ba? Pero ngayon, iba na ang pangalan niya. Medyo alive. Zest. Di ba? Zest Air. Yan ang pangalan niya. Binili na ni Mr. Gatsalian, I suppose. Siya yatang may-ari. Now, uh, uh, in fact, in one case, if you read this case of Ong Yu versus Court of Appeals, Attorney Ong Yu was on his way to uh, Butuan City, if I remember it right, a city in Mindanao. And uh, his luggage was lost, okay? Nawala, okay? Uh, and he, de he filed an action against Philippine Airlines claiming damages uh, as a result of the loss of the damage. Kaya lang, PAL invoked a provision in the contract that if at all PAL can be held liable for the loss of luggage, that cannot exceed 100 pesos. Diba? Uh, of course, the claim of attorney Ong Yu was this is a contract of adhesion and this is a void contract because practically he did not give consent to the contract. Sabi ng Supreme Court, of course not. Okay? A contract of adhesion as a rule is a valid contract because after all, the other party has a choice whether to accept or to reject the contract. If he bought the contract, he pra the, the ticket, he practically accepted the terms and conditions. Uh, at that time, it was really difficult uh, for people like Ong Yu to accept the terms and conditions, uh, not to accept. Because the consequence before, if you remember mga, lalo na nung 60s, even 70s, okay? There was only one domestic commercial airline company dito sa Pilipinas, Philippine Airlines. Wala pa namang Cebu Pacific, etc. In other words, if you don't agree with the terms and conditions of PAL, gusto mong pumunta ng Davao, ang alternative mo ay lumangoy, papuntang Davao, di ba? Or you can ride a ship of Sulpicio Lines, di ba? Mga tipong Princess of Stars, okay? Ang sasakyan mo. Pero ngayon, this ruling is much more acceptable because you really have a choice. Okay? Aside from Asian spirit, mayroong uh, Air Philippines, mayroong Cebu Pacific, etc. Now, however, okay, in relation to this contract, in this case, okay, uh, Metropolitan Bank, Metro Bank versus Jimmy Go, um, 2007 case involving a trust receipt, okay, which is obviously a contract of adhesion. Of course, uh, Jimmy Go claimed uh, the issue was one of the issues, whether or not the trans trust receipts are valid, considering that they are contracts of adhesion. But the Supreme Court said again, these contracts are valid. However, in these contracts, okay, if there is ambiguity in the contract, such ambiguity shall be con construed against the party who prepared the contract. Okay? Since it was Metro Bank who prepared the contract, the ambiguity was ruled uh, or decided by the Supreme Court against Metro Bank, okay? against the interest of Metro Bank. Practically, the second issue here goes into the question as to when did the obligation of uh, Jimmy Go to deliver the goods arose. Okay? Considering that uh, uh, this contract is a contract of adhesion and there was ambiguity as to when the goods have to be delivered, sabi ng Supreme Court, this stipulation should be construed against uh, uh, against Metro Bank, and it was ruled that 
the obligation became due only when demand was made by Metro Bank. Okay? Now, uh, so, consensuality of contracts. Into uh, another um, fundamental characteristic, okay? This scenario. Uh, we will be discussing in detail this uh, stipulation in a contract known as stipulation for a tree. Okay? A stipulation, a contract for the benefit of a third person. Now, uh, uh, in order for the beneficiary to be entitled to this benefit, one of the requirements under the law is that he must communicate his acceptance before to the obligor, before uh, the revocation of such uh, uh, benefit. A question here is, what if one, what if one, of the parties to the contract, to the uh, contract parties, hindi yung beneficiary, okay? Uh, revoke the benefit, okay? In fact, he may have sent a letter to the beneficiary informing the beneficiary that the benefit uh, in your favor in the contract which I entered into with B had already been revoked. Does it mean that the beneficiary and he, he uh, sent this letter uh, revocatory letter before the beneficiary could uh, communicate his acceptance. Does it mean that the beneficiary could no, would no longer be entitled to this benefit? The answer is not necessarily. He may still be entitled because in order for the revocation to be effective, it has to be consented to by both parties. Otherwise, if only one of the parties would revoke okay, the benefit in favor of this beneficiary that would be contrary to a fundamental principle in contracts known as the mutuality of contracts principle. Okay? Under this uh, principle, a contract must bind both contracting parties and its validity or compliance cannot be left to the will of one of them. Okay? So, as far as the benefit is concerned, as it was agreed upon by both parties, that can only be revoked by both parties. Okay? Again, a revocation by only one would uh, be contrary to this fundamental principle known as mutuality of contracts. Okay? Now, uh, a while ago we discussed a clause known as escalation clause. If uh, as an escalation clause may be invoked or would be invoked by a party at his whim without any reasonable and valid standard, the Supreme Court would rule that that is contrary to, um, to the mutuality of contracts principle. Okay? Thus, again, for that clause to be given effect, it should, have, it should be based on a valid and reasonable standard. It should not be based on uh, it should not be solely potestative in character, okay? Now, but in relation to this uh, fundamental principle, would the termination of a contract by one of the parties be violative of this fundamental principle, okay? If one of the parties in a contract is given the right to uh, terminate the contract by his own will, by his unilateral act, would that be contrary to the mutuality of contracts principle? The Supreme Court said no. Okay? Example, in the case of uh, Phil Banking versus Louis Xi involving a contract of lease uh, where the lessee was given the right to terminate the contract by merely giving notice uh, to the lessor and the termination would take effect like within 15 days from receipt of the notice of termination. The Supreme Court said that does not violate the mutuality of contracts principle that is not covered by the mutuality of, mutuality of contracts. What is covered pertains to the validity or compliance. It does not pertain to the termination of the contract. Okay? Now, uh, then uh, one other. Okay? 
obligatory force or others would call again obligatoriness of contracts. Okay? Under this principle, obligations arising from contracts have the force of law okay, between the contracting parties. This is not a law, but this has a force of law between the contracting parties and should therefore be complied with in good faith. Okay? Uh, the, probably the first question here is, when would a contract have the force of law between the contracting parties? The fact that there was already a meeting of the minds as to the object or subject matter and the cause, does it mean that the contract already has the force of law? Not necessarily. Okay? Uh, in order for a contract to have the force of law, the contract must have been perfected. Okay? It is at the time of the perfection of the contract that either party to the contract can compel the other party to perform his obligations under that contract. Okay? Of course, just because a contract had been perfected, does it mean that the contract is enforceable? Not necessarily, again, because the perfection of a contract is also subject, for example, to the statute of frauds. Okay? A contract of sale may have been perfected because there was already a meeting of the minds as to the object and the price. However, if it is not in the form prescribed by law and it is covered by 1403, that would be an unenforceable contract. Okay? We will discuss this contract. Uh, kinds of contracts as we discuss the classification of contracts. Okay? For now, again, a contract generally would have the force of law between the parties upon the perfection of such contract. Okay? Um, example, ah, ito muna, sorry, in relation to mutuality and uh, even autonomy of contracts. The parties in a contract of loan of money agreed that the yearly interest rate is 12% can be increased if there is a law that would authorize the increase of interest rates. Suppose OB, the lender, would increase by 5% the rate of interest to be paid by TY, the borrower, without a law authorizing such increase. Would OB's action be just and valid? Why? Has TY a remedy against the imposition of the rate increase? Uh, the question was, um, um, suppose, um, would OB's action be just and valid? The answer is definitely no, okay? Again, under the autonomy of contracts principle, uh, the parties can establish such uh, stipulations, terms and clauses as they may deem convenient. They agreed that there can only be an increase if there is a law. And since there was no law, there can be no valid increase, okay? But in one case, if you have read this case, uh, the parties agreed similar to the stipulation that there should be a law, okay, which uh, authorizes the increase of interest rate. Thereafter, at that time, uh, uh, the, the usury law had not yet been suspended. The central bank at that time, okay, issued a monetary board resolution allowing the increase in the interest rate. Now, with that monetary board resolution allowing the increase in the rate, would that now give the lender the right to increase the interest rate, considering their stipulation? The Supreme Court still said no, because a law is not the same as a monetary board resolution. And a monetary board resolution may have the force of a law, but it is not a law. And therefore, since the parties agreed that only if there is a law would there be an increase, since there was no law, merely a monetary board resolution, there can be no valid increase in the interest rate. Okay? In relation to the second scenario, okay? Um, Take note in bar exams uh, for a particular problem. Example, this is bar exam question number nine. There may be 
three problems, A, B, and C, or two problems, A and B. And those two problems need not be related to each other at all. Walang kinalaman sa isa't isa, basta nasa isang question lang siya. Okay? Pero magkaiba ang tanong. Okay? Do not be misled na ay... Anong kinalaman nito sa first? Minsan, wala talagang kinalaman. Huwag niyong pilitin na may kinalaman. Okay? So, in the second, pero common, like there is a set of facts and the questions would be A and B, that the problems in A and B would have to consider the facts in general. Unless, for example, in letter B, the examiner would change the facts. Okay? Change the facts given uh, at the start, okay? So be conscious of that uh, type of question. So, dito sa bidon, an American businessman secured parental consent for the employment of five minors to play certain roles. In two movies, he was producing at home in Makati. They worked at odd hours of the day and night, but always accompanied by parents or other adults. The producer paid the children talent fees at rates better than adult wages. But a social worker, DEB, reported to SWF that these children often missed going to school. They sometimes drank wine aside from being exposed to drugs. Okay? In some cases, they were filmed naked or in revealing costumes. In his defense, Don contended, all these were part of artistic freedom and cultural creativity. Okay? None of the parents complained, said Don. He also said that they signed a contract containing a waiver of their right to file any complaint in any office or tribunal concerning the working conditions of their children acting in the movies. Is the waiver valid and binding? Why or why not? Uh, here the waiver is, is a void waiver. Okay? Because this would obviously be contrary to the law, which provides for protection of minors, okay? uh, the employment of minors uh, under our labor law. Okay? Thus, uh, any waiver in relation to these uh, rights of minors, of uh, the, ra the law protecting the rights of minors, would be a void waiver, as it is contrary to law. Okay? Now, uh, but this one, uh, ah, in relation to um, another fundamental principle, the last one, okay? Relativity of contracts. The question in relation to this uh, voila. Um, wala tayong uh, pen, okay? But uh, the question here is uh, in contracts. Example, uh, A sold an item to B, okay? Thereafter, B sold the same item to C. Okay? Ordinarily, would A have a cause of action against C? Okay? The answer ordinarily would be none. Okay? Because there is no privity of contracts between A and C. C, A, and B ang dito sa contract and B and C as to the other contract. Okay? So who would be bound to a contract? Ordinarily, it would be the parties. Or who would be affected? Who would be benefited? Who can be held liable? The rule, only the parties, hindi naman. The rule would be the parties, their assigns, and heirs okay, would be bound to a contract, would be, uh, uh, would be affected by a contract, parties, assigns, and heirs. The assigns and heirs are called previous to that contract. Kaya ang principle na ito is known as the privity of contracts principle. So, uh, under 13... Uh, 
11, okay? Contracts take effect between the parties, assigns, and heirs, okay? However, is it possible for a contract not to affect the heirs, not to benefit the heirs? The answer is yes, okay? Uh, under this provision, only the parties, the, a contract may take effect only between the parties if the rights and obligations arising from this contract are intransmissible, okay? When would this con th these rights and obligations be intransmissible? There are three scenarios, okay? When the law so provides, okay? If there is a stipulation, and of course, uh, if the nature of the rights and obligations would not allow the transmissibility of these rights and obligations, okay? Uh, stipulation probably is the easiest, okay? Um, example, in a lease contract, okay, uh, decided by the Supreme Court, uh, which was the subject matter of a decision of the court, there was a stipulation in the contract that the rights and obligations arising from their contract are intransmissible. Ganon ka literal ang stipulation. Now the lessee died. Would his heir still have the right to the possession of the leased premises until the expiration of the period? Clearly the Supreme Court said no. Because with the death of the lessee, the contract was extinguished. Because the rights and obligations arising from the contract uh, are intransmissible by stipulation. Ordinarily, uh, would the heirs of a lessee still have the right to continue to possess? The answer is yes. Because the Supreme Court would rule that a lease contract is not a purely personal contract. Okay? And therefore, the rights and the obligations arising from that contract may be transmitted to the heirs to assigns. Even in lease contracts also, can a lessee ordinarily uh, sublease the premises in whole or in part? The answer is yes, except if he is prohibited from subleasing the property. So again, by stipulation. But law, is there a law which provides for the intransmissibility of certain rights? Yes under the law on usufruct, okay? Uh, ordinarily, when a usufructuary dies, would his rights be transmitted to his heirs? The answer is no, because the law so provides. But there's an exception to this, if there is a contrary stipulation in the contract, in the agreement, okay? Now, uh, as to non- uh, transmissibility or intransmissibility by contract or by agreement, a good example here would pertain to uh, a property right uh, of a partner, okay, known as the right in specific partnership property. By express provision of the law, a partner cannot assign his right in a specific partnership property uh, without all the other partners making the same assignment over the same property, okay? Kaya, uh, a partner alone, without the knowledge of the other partners, cannot, trans, cannot uh, transmit his rights to an assignee by law. Okay? Nature, it goes into the, uh, again, nature of the rights and obligations. Uh, the Supreme Court would say if the rights and obligations are purely personal or the qualifications of the parties have been considered in the establishment of the contract, okay? Ang, uh, this is common, of course, in uh, uh, contracts which would involve uh, skills, okay? Uh, maybe a good example would be a contract uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, sino kaya? Regine Velasquez as uh, uh, the artist who would sing in a concert, okay? Of course, with the nature of such uh, rights of uh, 
uh, region, he cannot, she cannot uh, transmit or assign such rights to Judy and Santos, okay? Because of the nature of the right, which is a purely personal right, okay? Now, uh, then, uh, however, okay? In relation to this uh, principle, uh, privity of contracts, while generally only the parties that assigns and heirs would be bound, okay, uh, may be affected, but under certain circumstances, a third person may be bound to a contract. A third person may be held liable under a contract in which he is not a party, in which he is not even privy, okay? Uh, or a person may have a cause of action. Ordinarily, a third person would not have a cause of action in relation to a contract. He would not have the right to rescind a contract uh, which he is not a party or he is not privy, okay? Uh, or he may be benefited uh, or he may be prejudiced uh, by such contract. And this time, uh, this one pertains to the relativity in general, relativity of contracts, okay? The first, okay, uh, of these uh, scenarios, okay, would, where a third person, let's start with a third person may be bound to a contract. This would involve contracts involving or creating real rights, okay? In contracts, creating real rights, third persons who would uh, uh, take possession of the object or subject matter of the contract would be bound to such contract, okay? Subject, of course, to the requirements, sabi ng batas, sa mortgage law, registration laws, etc., okay? Probably the best example of this would involve a real estate mortgage involving a parcel of land entered into probably between A and B, B being the mortgagee, A would be the mortgager, okay? Now, uh, if A sells this land to C, okay? And thereafter, if A, the mortgager, is also the principal debtor, he defaulted. Can the mortgagee foreclose this mortgage over this parcel of land? Uh, with the sale and the land may have been delivered to C, C would already be, may already be the owner of the land. But may there still be a valid foreclosure over the land even if the land is no longer owned by the mortgagor? The answer is yes. It is possible because again in such contract which creates real rights, the rights of the mortgagee attaches to the property. Whoever may be the owner of the property will be bound to this mortgage, okay? Maski siya ang may-ari, his ownership will be subject to the rights of the mortgagee. Again, subject to the qualification of the law. Ang qualification ng batas, subject to the law on mortgage, registration laws, because... For C to be bound to this contract, C is not a party to this contract, C is not even privy to this contract. Nonetheless, he would be bound if this contract is registered, okay? Or at least, even if not registered, if C has actual knowledge of this contract, because as the Supreme Court would say, actual knowledge has the same effect as registration, okay? So again, C, a third person, is not a party to the mortgage, is not privy to the mortgage, but he will be bound to this mortgage because a mortgage creates real rights, okay? Pangalawa would uh, involve contracts in fraud of creditors, okay? Here, an example would be, itong C, A, sold a parcel of land to B, but the sale was in fraud of a creditor like X. Para walang mahabol ang creditor niya. So, binenta ang kanyang properties. Okay? Now, ordinarily, X, being a third person, would not be bound. Would not have a right in relation to this contract. Okay? Would not have a cause of action in relation to this contract. But, because this contract is in fraud of a creditor, the law grants him the right to 
rescind. If you remember, this is one contract considered as a rescissible contract under 1381. Okay? So uh, contracts in fraud of creditors, we will discuss in detail when we discuss rescissible contracts. Okay? Pangatlo would be a scenario where a person ordinarily who is not a party to a contract or not privy to a contract cannot be held liable under such contract. Anong uh, pakialam ko sa inyo dyan, di ba? Hindi naman ako party sa contract na yan. Hindi naman ako privy. Why should I be held liable? But that is possible. Okay? Under, the, under 1314, when a third person interferes, okay? with a contract. This is interference by a third person. Uh, but take note, a requirement, a very important requirement for this provision to apply is there must be malice okay, in the interference. It should have been malicious. Okay? In this case, Francis Albert, a citizen and resident of New Jersey, USA, under whose law he was still a minor, being only 20 years of age, was hired by ABC Corporation Manila to serve for two years as its chief computer programmer. But after serving for only four months, he resigned to join XYZ Corporation, which enticed him by offering more advantageous terms. His first employer sues him in Manila for damages arising from the breach of his contract of employment. He sets up his minority as a defense, as for the annulment of the contract on that ground. The plaintiff disputes this by alleging that since the contract was executed in the Philippines, under whose law the age of majority is 18, he was no longer a minor. Okay? The question, one of the questions was, suppose XYZ Corporation is impleted as co-defendant, what would be the basis of its liability? Okay? XYZ Corporation uh, is the third person in relation to the contract entered into between ABC and Francis Albert, okay? Now, uh, why should XYZ Corporation be held liable? Again, uh, he may be held liable under 1314, okay? Uh, if it can be proven that indeed he maliciously induced a party to a contract to violate the contract. Under the facts, is it possible May uh, the question, what would, if any, the answer is, uh, the basis again would be 1314, interference by a third person. Why? Because of the phrase, I would say, uh, which enticed him, XYZ Corporation enticed him by offering more advantageous terms, okay? In other words, uh, for a liability to arise under 1314, the first requirement, of course, is that person who may be held liable must have knowledge of the existence of the contract. From the facts of the case, dapat tingnan nyo yon. Because if he has no knowledge, uh, how could he maliciously induce the party to violate the contract? If he merely asked the person, Uy, uh, you join our company, uh, apparently there would be no such uh, malice. Okay? But I would agree that there was malice under the facts, okay? Because XYZ Cor Corporation enticed him by offering more advantageous terms, okay? Uh, sometimes a bar exam, uh, the connotations of words or phrases may matter, okay? Ang entice, I would consider medyo may negative connotation, di ba? Entice in Tagalog would be parang inakit mo, di ba? Talagang malicious, okay? Inakit mo yung tao. At saka, more advantageous terms, parang the premise is, they knew the terms and conditions of the other contract, but they were, they offered more advantageous terms, okay? To that extent, I can also agree that uh, uh, XYZ Cor Corporation may be held liable under 1314, okay? Now, um, a question here under uh, this provision is who may be held liable? Ang common na sagot is under 1314 is the third person. Of course not. Not only the third person, but the party himself also who violated the contract can be held liable okay, by the other uh, contracting party. 
in fact, what's the nature of the liability of the party and the third person? The Supreme Court would say they would be solidarily liable. Is there a basis to this? Uh, on its face, there is no law. Uh, nothing in 1314 which would provide for solidarity liability. But the Supreme Court would consider this act uh, as a tortious act as against the other contracting parties. And therefore, under uh, uh, 2194, uh, two or more persons uh, who are held liable under quasi delic would be held solidarily liable. They would be considered as joint tort feasors. Okay? Now, uh, uh, one final question here would pertain to uh, may the liability, however, of the third person, assuming he maliciously induced a party to a contract to violate his contract, be more than the liability of the party himself who violated the contract? The Supreme Court said in one case, hindi naman. Okay? His liability cannot exceed the liability of the party who himself violated the contract. Okay? Uh, probably one other. Okay? Roland. A basketball star was under contract for one year to play for, I suppose it's play for pay, exclusively for Lady Love. However, even before the basketball season could open, he was offered a more attractive pay plus fringe benefits by Sweet Taste. Roland accepted the offer and transferred to Sweet Taste. Lady Love sues Roland and Sweet Taste for breach of contract. Defendants claim that the restriction to play for Lady Love alone is void, hence unenforceable, as it constitutes an undue interference with the right of Roland to enter into contracts and the impairment of his freedom to play and enjoy basketball. Okay? Can Roland be bound by the contract he entered into with Lady Love or can he disregard the same? Is he liable at all? How about sweet taste? Is it liable to Lady Love? Okay? Uh, take note in some questions. Okay? Uh, in some uh, bar exam questions, there would be two, actually two or more questions asked. Okay? A common mistake of examinees is to answer only one of the questions, especially kung ang mga tanong just like this, hindi yung ABC. Tuloy-tuloy okay? uh, lang ang tanong. Okay? Uh, my advice is always, after answering a question, always go back to the problem okay so that you will not miss the facts and you will not miss the questions okay yun yung mga reasons why you should find time to review your work okay now and your answer uh, to the first can Roland be bound of course if even if you just cite the obligatory force of contracts uh, uh, contracts uh, shall have the force of law between the contracting parties and therefore should be complied with in good faith okay and if there is a breach of course it can be held liable for damages that may be suffered by the other party how about sweet taste is it liable i would also agree that uh, sweet taste may be held liable under 1314 uh, apparently from the facts uh, uh, he was offered a more attractive pay plus fringe benefits uh, and considering uh, the Supreme Court sometimes would use this doctrine, doctrine of common knowledge, okay? As a team, as a basketball team, it should be aware as to who are the players of the other teams, di ba? And therefore, it cannot uh, feign ignorance na, ay, hindi ko alam na si Roland pala ay uh, a player of uh, uh, Lady Love, okay? So, uh, because of the knowledge of uh, the existence of the contract between Roland and Lady Love, and uh, in fact, uh, Sweet Taste offered uh, more attractive uh, fringe benefits, it would appear that it maliciously induced Roland to violate his contract with Lady Love, okay? And therefore, liable under 1314. And finally, okay? Interference by a third person. The last one. Uh, sige, tapusin ko na lang. 
okay, would pertain to a stipulation for a tree. Okay? Uh, let's start with uh, the nature of this concept. This is merely a stipulation. Okay? Uh, literally, a stipulation in favor of a third person. And therefore, the benefit in favor of a third person must not be the principal purpose of the contract. There must be a principal purpose. The benefit in favor of a third person must only be incidental. Okay? Example, if A and B had an agreement that each one of them will contribute uh, like one million each, for the entire amount, two million, to be given to C, a third person, on installment basis, maybe on a monthly basis, like 50,000 a month. The benefit in favor of C, which is 50,000 a month, is that a stipulation for Atrui? The answer is no. Because clearly, the agreement of A and B practically is the benefit in favor of C. That is the main purpose of their agreement. That is not merely uh, an incidental benefit. Okay? Uh, a better scenario where the benefit would be incidental probably would be a contract of loan. There is a contract of loan between A and B. However, it was stipulated that as to the interest that would have to be paid by A to B. Example, they agreed that the interest rate would be, uh, let's say, 12% per annum. Okay? Instead of the uh, interest that will accrue on a monthly basis, uh, for, uh, instead of A giving such amount to B, that amount will be given to a third person. This time, it is a stipulation for Atrui, as long as there is no burden, there is no condition imposed upon the third person, there is no compensation to be paid by the third person in relation to the benefit. Because kung nakalagay sa stipulation that C will have to uh, render service to B, ay that is not a stipulation for a true e, okay? uh, That would not fall under this provision. Again, gratuitous benefit ito. Okay? Walang kapalit. Okay? Bait lang, okay? Now, uh, uh, okay, but take note, another requirement in order for that uh, benefit in favor of third person to be considered a stipulation for atrui, which would require, which would have other requirements, therefore, for that person to be entitled, is that uh, there must have been a clear and deliberate grant of this benefit. The grant must not be only incidental, okay? Uh, if you read this case of uh, Bonifacio Brothers versus Mora, ang Bonifacio Brothers, ito yung uh, parang car repair shop. If you have uh, uh, noticed, uh, sa, mayroon pa yatang natitira na car repair na Bonifacio Brothers ang pangalan. Anyway, in this case, uh, a car was uh, brought to one of the shops of Bonifacio Brothers for repair. Incidentally, that car was the subject matter of uh, an insurance contract. Okay? In the insurance contract, uh, there was a stipulation that for the beneficiary to be able to receive, to be entitled to uh, the benefit under the contract, the car must be brought to a car repair shop for repair. Eh, pursuant to that provision, di na lang ang kotse sa uh, uh, Bonifacio Brothers. Now, in relation to the uh, proceeds ng uh, insurance contract, sabi ng Bonifacio Brothers, we are the ones entitled to the proceeds ng insurance policy because that provision in the insurance contract is a stipulation for a true Sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi. Okay? Because there was no clear and deliberate grant of benefit in favor of Bonifacio Brothers. Incidental lang under the contract na dadalhin sa isang uh, car repair shop. Okay? There was no really a clear and deliberate grant to Bonifacio Brothers. So this is not a stipulation for a true Okay? Now, if that stipulation is indeed a stipulation for a true 
for the beneficiary to be entitled to this benefit, finally the law requires that the beneficiary must communicate his acceptance to the obligor, okay? Not even to both parties, but only to the obligor uh, before its revocation, okay? As I discussed a while ago already, in order for the beneficiary to lose such benefit by virtue of a revocation, the revocation must have been agreed upon by both parties, okay? Uh, as discussed, for example, in the case of uh, Kaufman versus PNB, if only one of the parties would revoke the benefit, that will not be a valid revocation. Otherwise, that would violate the mutuality of contracts principle, okay? So, I think uh, that should be enough for as far as the fundamental principles. I think wala na, so we can have a break, okay? Kain muna tayo.